Let somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Come on wherever you are online on site. Come on make some noise. Make some noise. Make some noise. Make some noise. Get something in your hand and raise it up to the champion. Raise it up to the champion. Raise it up to the champion. To the king of glory. To the ancient of days. To the reigning king. He is the champion. He is the champion. He is the champion. He's a wonder working God. Come on, come on. Make some noise. Make some noise. Make some noise. Woo! You cannot get tired of shouting. Come on, come on. Raise a sound to the heavens. Make some noise. Are you sure you have something in your hand? Raise it up to the champion. Raise it up to the champion. Raise it up.
up on your feet and begin to wave your hands to Jesus. Give him praise, give him glory. Give him all the honor and adoration. Darling Jesus, darling Jesus, oh my darling Jesus, what a wonder you are. We love you so much, darling Jesus. Oh my darling Jesus, what a wonder you are. Darling Jesus, darling Jesus. Oh my darling Jesus, what a wonder you are. We love you so, we love you so much, darling Jesus. Oh my darling Jesus, you're a wonder. Our Father and our God, we give you praise, we give you glory. Thank you for this night of wonders. Father, we ask tonight that you show forth yourself in the name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified. Let the devil be terrified. And let us be edified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. It can be louder, it can be better. Come on, clap for Jesus. Hallelujah! It's a great privilege and an honor standing here. I would like to thank our Father and the Lord, Mommy and Daddy Gio, for this wonderful opportunity. And I would like to appreciate all our fathers and mothers in the Lord. May God give you grace to finish this race to the end in Jesus' name. Our topic tonight is understanding the God of wonders. Understanding the God of wonders. And our Bible text shall be taken from the book of Psalm 126 verse 1. Psalm 126 verse 1. The Bible says that when the Lord God turned again the captivity of Zion, we are like them that dream. That is not just a Bible text. That is a testimony for you. I pray for somebody tonight. God will turn again your captivity. If you are the one, a louder amen. When we say wonder, what do we mean? When we say wonder, what do we mean? Wonder is the hand of God upon the life of a man, causing him to run and fly in life. The hand of God upon the life of a man, causing him to run and fly in life. First King 18. 41 to 44. First King 18, 41 to 44. We see a story there about Elijah. Elijah gained supernatural speed and divine acceleration. And he ran ahead of King Ahab and his chariots onto Jezreel. You have been crawling for a long time. Your progress has been slow. You have been revolving around circle like the children of Israel. I came all the way from away to tell you tonight, God will give you supernatural speed. I said God will give you supernatural speed. What is a wonder? A wonder is the visible demonstration of the presence of God in a man's life. The visible demonstration of God's presence in a man's life. Exodus 3, verse 1 to 4. Exodus 3, verse 1 to 4. Moses was long forgotten 
He was already 80 years old. He was at the backside of the desert. But God can never be too late. Somebody here, I am saying that God can never be too late. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 8. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 8. The Bible says that he maketh everything beautiful in his time. When God appears, the wasted years will not matter anymore. The wonders of God causes men to have an encounter with God. I pray every time that you have lost in your life, you will recover in the name of Jesus. What is a wonder? A wonder is the God factor in the life of a man, distinguishing him among men. It causes men to produce excellent and undeniable results effortlessly. Wonder causes a man to produce excellent and undeniable results effortlessly. Second Kings chapter 3, 16 to 17. Second Kings 3, 16 to 17. Three kings gathered together and there was no water and they met the prophet the prophet said that this valley shall be full of water there will not be wind there will not be rain but they will see water a wonder is a proof of the mightiness of god people may not know how you are doing it john 3 verse 8 john 3 verse 8 the bible says that El, that is we blow where it listed you don't know where it's coming from you don't know where it's going to so is every man that is born of god a wonder is a proof that the hand of god is upon your life hallelujah understanding the god of wonders is the ability to mentally grasp and comprehend who the god of wonders is in Psalm 36, verse 9b, Psalm 36, verse 9b, the Bible said that in the light we shall see light. The God of wonders is the one who specializes in changing lives and destiny. When you want to understand somebody, draw close to the person. And when you see some actions, then you can say you understand the person. Let's look at some of the things that God has done. Then we can peep into how wonderful he is. Let's look at the wonders of salvation. The wonders of salvation. Creating man is a wonder. Isaiah 43 verse 21. Isaiah 43 verse 21. These people have I made for myself. They shall show forth my praise. His knowledge is a wonder. God was not shocked when Adam fell in the garden. Ephesians 1 verse 4. Ephesians 1 verse 4. He predestinated our salvation before the foundation of the world. Man lost it in the garden. God told him in Genesis 2 verse 17, Genesis 2 verse 17, that you shall not eat this fruit. The day you eat this fruit, you shall die. And Adam ate it. He did not die physically, but he died a spiritual death. He was separated from God. God was not surprised about it because God already knew beforehand. Your problem is not a surprise to God. God has already prepared a solution before your problem. He did not hear me. God has already provided a way of escape for that problem. Hallelujah. His redemption plan is a wonder. His redemption plan is a wonder. Matthew 1 verse 21. Matthew 1 verse 21. His name shall be called Jesus and by him shall the people be saved. He came to the earth as a man. How can God Almighty leave his throne and come to the earth as man? John 12 verse 24. John 12 Verse 24, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. He sold himself to reap many sons. It is a wonder. In choosing a virgin to bring forth the Savior, it's a wonder. Isaiah 7 verse 14, Isaiah 7 verse 14, and this shall be the sign. A virgin shall conceive and shall call his name Emmanuel. When angel Gabriel came to Mary in Luke 1, 34 to 37, Luke 1, 34 to 37, and the angel announced that Mary, you shall bring forth a savior. Mary said, how shall this thing be? There's somebody here, you are asking, how shall this thing be? I came all the way to tell you that the power of the highest shall overshadow you. The power of the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and you shall break forth. In the name of Jesus, his transfiguration on the mountain is a wonder. Matthew 17, verse 1 to 8. Matthew 17, verse 1 to 8. Jesus appeared, he went to the mountain, and two prominent personalities from the Old Testament appeared to him. 
Elijah and Moses and they submitted authority to him. Elijah representing the prophet because everything has been prophesied about Jesus while Moses represented the law. And after that, Elijah submitted the, the, the prophecies to Jesus and Moses submitted the laws to Jesus. And God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Yeah, he mean. Everything has been submitted to Jesus. So whatsoever is in your life that is not in submission to Jesus Christ, I command tonight, let God appear. I say let God appear. His atoning work on the cross is a wonder. He said it in John 19 verse 30. It is finished. Ha! Huh? It is finished. Every situation in your life, I command, it is finished. I speak again, it is finished. His death, his burial, his resurrection is a wonder. His blood is a wonder. Hebrews 9, 13 to 14. Hebrews 9, 13 to 14. His blood can purge the conscience. The blood of bulls and goats can only cleanse the body. But his blood can penetrate into the soul and the spirit of man and wash it. His forgiveness is a wonder. Hebrews 10 verse 17. Hebrews 10 verse 17. Their sins and their iniquity will I remember no more. I can go on and on and keep counting and retelling the wonders of salvation. If you are saved here, yeah, jump up on your feet and shout, Hallelujah! Wonders of salvation. Because of time, wonders of sanctification. Wonders of sanctification. Sanctification is not just the second work of grace. Sanctification is also a present, ongoing, and continuous work of grace. Sanctification is a present, ongoing, and continuous work of grace. It does not stop. We are continually sanctified from one level of consecration to another. We are continually sanctified from one level of consecration to another. Sanctification is a progressive work of grace. When we say sanctification, what do we mean? Sanctification is that special effect upon a believer that makes him live a holy life effortlessly. You don't struggle to be holy. It is that withholding anointing in you that prevents you from falling into sin. Ah. Genesis 20, verse 6. Genesis 20, verse 6. God said, I prevented you, Abimelech, from touching the wife of Abraham. The power that saves from sin is the same power that sanctifies. The power that saves from sin is the same power that keeps from sin. The power that saves from sin is the same power that can sustain you to the very end. Matthew 24, verse 12. He, Matthew 24, verse 12. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Lots of believers are frustrated. They are in pain and serious agony. Just like Paul in Romans 7, verse 1 to the end. Romans 7, verse 1 to the end. Paul said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body? What I don't want to do, that's what I find myself doing. What I want to do, I cannot do it. As a preacher, you preach holiness, but you don't live holy. It is not every holiness preachers that live holy. You can preach prosperity and be poor. Are you getting me? You can preach liberty and deliverance, yet you are in bondage. Every preacher in the house from today receive grace to practice what you are preaching. When an unbeliever commits sin, there is little or no feeling of guilt or shame. In fact, he enjoys the sin. He finds pleasure in it. But when a believer falls into sin, his heart is broken. He feels guilty. There are many believers going around circle. Today you are up. Tomorrow you are down. Today you are hot. Tomorrow you are cold. Today you are on fire for the Lord. Tomorrow you don't know what is happening. Today you are standing. Tomorrow you are falling. I came for those believers. It is called the spirit of rising and falling. And I declare by the word of the Lord, God will perform wonders in your life. Philippians 2, 
verse 13. Philippians 2, verse 13. The Bible says, It is God that worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. The empowerment to live a holy life comes from God. Jude 20, Jude 24, Jude 24. The Bible says that God is able to keep you from falling. I know some of you are asking, is it possible to stand and not fall? Yes. Tell your neighbor, yes. Shout yes. Holiness is not for the high and mighty. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Holiness is not for the high and mighty. Holiness is not for men of God. Men that have titles. You can be holy. Holiness can be for you. Holiness can be your personal experience. Holiness is not too far a virtue in Christ that your hands cannot reach. Holiness is not too deep a virtue in Christ that your hands cannot grasp. Holiness can be your story. I came to tell anyone suffering from every form of addiction, cultism, pornography, all forms of immorality, smoking, homosexuality, lesbianism, I declare that bondage is broken now. That bondage is broken now. That bondage is broken now. Before, when you see that sister, you start shaking. You will meet that sister and you will say, Sister, how are you? Nothing will happen. Because the power that keeps one from sin is in you. And it is called a wonder. Every demonic habit, every demonic trait, 1 John 3 verse 8, the Son of Man was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. I command it to be destroyed. We are sanctified. How are we sanctified? By his word. His word is a wonder. John 17 verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17 17. John 15 verse 3. John 15 verse 3. Ye are cleansed by the word which I have spoken unto you. His word is a wonder. When you open up the Bible, the Bible is living. The Bible is life. The Bible is not a dead book. The Bible is a book of wonders. When you open the Bible, the Bible opens to you. When you open the Bible, the Bible talks to you. When you open the Bible, scriptures come alive and start to minister to your heart. When you open the Bible, you are having a koinonia, a relationship with God. Somebody shall wonder. The word of God is a mirror. You are changed. Ah. Hey, you are changed. Second Corinthians 3, verse 18. Second Corinthians 3, verse 18. We are changed into the very image of Jesus from one level of glory to another level of glory. Don't rationalize the word, just follow the word. Obey the word. Proverbs 13, verse 13. Proverbs 13, verse 13. He that despise the word shall be destroyed. How are we sanctified? We are sanctified by prayers. Exodus 34. Verse 35. Exodus 34, verse 35. Moses spent time with God and he did not know that a part of God have rubbed off on him. And the children of Israel could not be on his face. When you spend time with somebody, part of the person's attributes rub off on you. Ah, he didn't hear me. He didn't hear me. You become whom you spend time with. When you spend time with God, Part of God rub off on you. When we continually fellowship with God, His attributes rubs us on. Prayer molds our character. I don't care whatever lust, whatever addiction, whatever carnality you came here with. As you pray tonight, they die. They die. They die. Number three, we are sanctified by spirits. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us. Galatians 5 verse 16. Galatians 5 verse 16. Walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. The Spirit of God is a wonder. Because God is so big. Isaiah 66 verse 1. Isaiah 66 verse 1. He is seated in heaven and makes his earth his footstool. Yet he recites in our hearts. The love of God is shared in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Romans 5 verse 5. Romans 5 verse 5. The Holy Spirit empowers you. He helps you to live a holy, a holy life. How are we sanctified? Number four, by service. Service. Romans 12, verse 11. Romans 12, verse 11. 
Bible says, be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So some of you, you come to church. When you come to church, you, you look at the chair and you, and you touch it and you say, it's not clean. Who are you expecting to clean the chair for you? It's not clean. Why didn't they clean this chair? Why didn't they buy fuel in the gen? Where are these people? Who are they? You can join the workforce. Somebody clap for Jesus. When you serve God, you will face lesser temptation. The reason why people are falling into temptation is because they have free time. Free time to gist. Free time to play. But when you are engaged in the house of the Lord, serving the Lord, temptation will be minimized because you will be busy in his house. If you are clapping, clap away. Clap away. Come on. The Holy Spirit can sanctify your thoughts. It can sanctify your desires. It can sanctify your words. It can sanctify your actions. My time is up. Rise up on your feet. I will turn the remaining one to a declaration. Rise up on your feet. If you are shouting, shout louder. Shout louder. Shout Listen to me. I just have three minutes. Listen. A wonder, be standing, keep standing. A wonder is the arrangement of grace at the background and setup of mercy. <laughs> you are where you are now is not a mistake, it's only a setup. You didn't get me. Where you are now is not a what? It's not a mistake, it's only a setup. Joseph thought he had lost it. From slavery to prison. But God was setting him up to be a prime minister. I pray for somebody. God will set you up for greatness. Keep standing, keep standing, keep standing. Wonder is grace for supernatural speed. Isaac said, go and get me the venison. Let me eat. But the, the wife told Jacob, go and get it. And Isaac asked Jacob, how is it that you have brought it? And he said, the Lord brought it to me. The Lord brought it to me. You might be here, you are single. The Lord will bring her to you. <laughs> you might be here, you are barren. The Lord will bring those twins to you. You might be here, you are jobless. The Lord will bring all that job to you. You might be here, you are broke. The Lord will perform a wonder that will swallow poverty from your life. In the name of Jesus. A wonder is a signature of God in life of person. No time. Can you say it with me with a very loud voice, with every strength that you can muster in you? Say, Father, perform wonders in my life. Pray, pray, 30 seconds, pray. Sharabarakada. Shataya Dadakada, Pera Kaliaba, Arian Dalisa, perform wonders in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. In conclusion, keep standing. Wonder as an acronym, as an acronym. Wonder, works of never ending deity, ever real. Works of never ending divinity, ever real. And I'm going to summarize by shouting three powerful shouts of wonder. Are you ready? That's how we summarize this prayer. Are you ready? Are you ready? Shout wonder! Shout wonder! Shout wonder!